Hello, I'm Marianne Fulker and I'm the CEO of Perth's leading think tank, the Committee for Perth. Welcome to Fact-Based Talks, an online series where you get to hear the latest research from our organisation. Fact-Based is a long-standing joint venture research program between the Committee for Perth and the University of Western Australia. We are the leaders in delivering tangible research that drives structural, cultural and behaviour change on issues that matter to the people of Greater Perth. To date, the partnership has produced more than 80 pieces of research, creating a knowledge base on issues that affect our region and its future. These include the economy, global competitiveness, transport and mobility, gender equality, and the region's demography and geography, to name but a few. Each of these is available on our website for download free of charge. This current series of fact-based talks is the opportunity to share incremental research on our Future of Work project, which aims to equip WA and its people for the changing world of work. I trust you find the information and analysis contained in this presentation stimulating and that it adds to your understanding of a complex issue that affects us all. Thanks, Marion. So this fact-based talk is on Fact Base 73, Making Strategic Jobs Count. It is research that Professor Sharon Bierman and myself have been doing for the last eight years, um, examining employment and housing targets and the more equitable redistribution of jobs across the city. So planning in cities aims to shape and, and create how we live and work according to some idealised model. There are various strategic and uh, statutory tools that are employed to do this um, because cities do not just emerge serendipitously. The way that we live um, now in cities is very much planned. So one issue in particular that planners are interested in is the balancing of job opportunities across the city and the access to these job opportunities, given that there has been rising spatial inequalities across the world. In Perth, a job housing balance ratio or employment self-sufficiency ratio has been used to, to do this and encourage a, a greater distribution or a more even distribution of job growth across the Perth metropolitan area. However, despite 60 years of using this employment self-sufficiency, there has been very little change in the ratio across the Perth uh, sub-regions and inequality between the inner um, metropolitan area and outer areas has increased. This fact base discusses these spatial inequalities as well as introduces an alternative target. So we, at the moment, we are sort of guided by Perth and Peel at 3.5 million strategic um, metropolitan strategy. And the core of this is to provide a greater employment close to where people work um, and where they live. So place, work and live close. Um, and this is to reduce the commuting and produce more economically sustainable uh, regions. And employment self-sufficiency is used as the target to redistribute jobs across the city. It provides uh, local authorities, uh, planning authorities, with a guide as to how many jobs are needed to be increased or, you know, um, across a region, across uh, target um, areas. So we see from this map um, in the central region, the 2011 actual self-sufficient employment self-sufficiency 140% and then two and 2050 target is also 140%. So they are well on their way to being okay. It is the other outer metropolitan regions where the 2011 actual um, number, uh, target number, the ratio is much less than 2050. So there needs to be an increase, a significant increase in jobs in these areas. So this table shows the number of jobs in 2011 the number of jobs that are needed to hit the 2050 target in each sub-region, as well as the, uh, the difference between the 2011 and the 2050 jobs and the percentage of jobs that needs to be added. And what we can see is in the central region, 52% more jobs need to be added to, to, in, to hit the 2050 target. Whereas in the other outer metropolitan regions, we need between 134% and 
104% increase in jobs to hit the targets. What, but what is interesting is that these areas um, find it more difficult than the central to increase um, the jobs and the types of jobs um, that are increased there also, it, it is difficult to get a diversity. So um, it is not as easy. So to understand the complexity of um, employment provision across uh, Perth, we need to look at the commuting um, and which, which is not taken into account in current West Australian planning um, employment self-sufficiency targets. So this table shows on the left column where people work and across the top, um, across the rows is where they reside. So we can see um, that in all areas, the majority of people live and work in their area. So we see the total number of employment running down the far um, right column. So the majority of people um, live and work in the same area. The difference, however, between the central and north um, and, and the, the, outer, the other regions, the outer metropolitan regions, is that the, the central region is a net importer of jobs, whereas the other regions are net exporters. So in other words, they are sending more people out to work in other areas than they are providing jobs themselves. So if we look then at the changes in jobs across these um, areas and what the difference is between the number of jobs that are provided and the employment self-sufficiency ratio that they are supposed to be uh, achieving, we see that the majority of the outer metropolitan, a lot of the outer metropolitan regional um, local government areas are actually in a deficit in terms of the number of jobs that they're supposed to be um, created by 2006, 2011 and 2016. And we see these differences across these, this 10 year period. And what is interesting is even in those strategic, those outer um, the metropolitan strategic areas of Joondalup, Wanneroo and Mandra, which are identified in the strategic plan, they are also in deficit. So there is a lot that is still needed in terms of job creation, even though there has been a lot of planning to try and shape these areas. And it, do, it does point, because there is sort of in a lot of the middle ring and inner ring um, local government areas, there is, you know, they have an excess of jobs. It does point to growing spatial inequalities and disparity between these outer and inner and middle ring um, community or local government areas, um, which planning targets are supposed to um, be alleviating. So the question then um, arises, what causes spatial inequality? And we can think of it as four things. Firstly, there are locational strategic advantages to certain places of, um, in terms of different industries. And so not all industries are found evenly across the city. We will see some industries attracted to ports, some attracted to um, you know, places of knowledge where there's universities, some attracted to agricultural areas. And then we will have um, clustering in certain areas of certain industries. Secondly, different industries and occupation have different timelines in terms of establishment and some can be established very quickly and they may grow with population. So as the population grows, you will find job growth. But there is others that take a little bit longer and these are what we tend to think of as strategic jobs. They may need, but they may need a little bit more strategic thinking from the government in order to encourage them. Thirdly, the targets that are currently used to redistribute jobs across the city aggregate the employment targets so they don't really account for job types and job attributes, the variation of these things. And so what we find is even if we have increases across the city, these increases are nominal or quantitative and not necessarily in terms of strategic or population driven jobs which may cause some areas to be at a disadvantage um, in relation to others. And fourthly, household and work decisions are extremely complex and depend upon individual preferences. So it makes it really difficult to plan for commuting or not. And so, you know, we don't know why some people commute and why they don't, even if you have exactly the same circumstance. So now I would like to hand it over to Sharon. To better tackle spatial inequality, 
Kirsten has uh, suggested distinguishing job types. So what we did was uh, distinguish two major forms of jobs, the one strategic and the other population following. The approach we used was simple and using readily available information so that it can be replicated. So we used 2016 ABS four digit level occupation of employment data, of which there are 474 occupation types. Our analysis was indicative only, so it was binary for simplicity's sake. If there were only a few in the category, we would just put them all into one category. The definitions we used for strategic employment was employment to do with globally competitive industries driving the local economy. So in Perth, that would be, for example, those in the materials and energy sector. Population following jobs, on the other hand, are all to do with local demand and are very much associated with population growth. So for example, the jobs in that category would be teachers and police. The guiding questions which we used to further uh, distinguish between uh, strategic and population uh, emanated from the literature and uh, can be uh, summarized as um, does a job cluster with other jobs in a specific area or, or is it evenly dispersed across um, an area? Does a job entail high levels of knowledge, specialization and networking? Does a job link to specialized industry infrastructure such as a port-based marine research complex? Um, and or does the job service people and businesses or does it create new jobs as the industry establishes? The results that we got across the whole of Greater Perth were essentially that there are 30% strategic jobs, just a bit over and a bit under 70% population following jobs. The population following jobs are primarily clerical and admin workers, sales workers, laborers. The strategic jobs, on the other hand, are primarily professionals, managers, and technical and trade workers. If we look at how those jobs uh, are distributed across space using the LGA um, uh, spatial um, unit, we see that the city of Perth has most of both types, so that it's most e evenly spread. Most LGAs have many more population following jobs than strategic jobs. Outer LGAs have many more population following jobs, and inner LGAs have fewer jobs overall because they're small LGAs, uh, but more strategic jobs in general. Another way of looking at that in, in, instead of absolute numbers is proportionally. So again, looking at that in terms of LGAs, more central LGAs have the highest proportion of strategic jobs, whereas the outer LGAs have a disproportionately higher relative number of population following jobs. What we are suggesting in this piece of research is that a very useful way of um, guiding us to what needs to be done to improve spatial inequality is to look at the ratio of strategic to population following jobs. The city of Perth has about the same number of strategic and population following jobs, so the ratio is just over 100. Subiaco is the next highest. Mandurah has five times the number of population following jobs than strategic jobs, so the ratio sits at around 20. South Perth has a ratio of 50, so there's half the number of strategic than population following jobs. So we've dif distinguished jobs. What does it mean in terms of employees? So what we did is we characterized in population and strategic jobs by looking at a whole range of socioeconomic characteristics, also from the, um, the uh, ABS data. So popula population following jobs are associated most closely with higher proportions of younger workers, females, lower level qualifications, part-time employment, lower incomes, and they travel lower distance uh, um, they don't travel as far for, for work. The implications of this, um, because most of the population following jobs are in the outer areas, um, we have a disadvantaged workforce profile in the outer regions. 
Indiscriminate target, targeting where we don't differentiate between job type could result in increases in population following jobs, which may exacerbate the socioeconomic differences between inner and outer regions. The strategy then is to do with increasing strategic jobs, with a particular focus on strategic jobs, to ensure that outer regions um, have more strategic job, but also access to strategic jobs in other regions. The concluding comments then from across both Kirsten and my uh, parts of the presentation is that targets for job, for job distribution should differentiate between job types. That is strategic and population following. We propose the ratio of strategic to population following jobs as a useful um, tool to inform targeting. Of the 831,000 jobs in Greater Perth in 2016, 31% were classified as strategic and 69% as population following. Population following jobs are more, more likely to be evenly spread because of their close relationship with uh, population and population demand. Strategic jobs, on the other hand, are linked to key industries with complex locational requirements and may require very specific and focused planning support. Concentrating on strategic jobs ensures policy addresses both employment self-sufficiency and the reality of geographical concentrations of strategic industry. Targeting strategic job distribution as well as improving accessibility to jobs means a focus on fewer key jobs with a greater chance of success. Disruptive change to work and travel, um, looking into the future, could further alter the geography of jobs and travel, making it even more vital to think strategically about how we plan. Thank you for listening to Fact-Based Talks. Our research is available on our website to download free of charge, and you will find this bulletin and other bulletins related to the future of work and all other areas that the Committee for Perth covers on Perth and its future available there.